Hi, yo, good evening, viewers of the tube. I'm your host, Tyler, and get ready to question everything you have ever known about Bitcoin, as today we are going deep down the rabbit hole. And just like Alice, you're going to land in Wonderland, because it's time for Chico Crypto. The security of Bitcoin is rarely questioned, as it is backed by the most powerful computing network in the world, thwarting off any proof-of-work attacks, and advanced cryptography protects users' addresses and funds from hackers. Although, should we be questioning Bitcoin's overall security? In my opinion, yes, as we should always be questioning, learning, and understanding all aspects, because if you're like me and Bitcoin and crypto is your life, I don't want to become complacent. So today, let's dig down deep and discuss a few things that might just make you question the security of BTC. The first thing I would like to discuss is a distributed effort like a Bitcoin mining pool trying to solve a block and be rewarded with BTC called the Large Bitcoin Collider. It is a network of computers pulling their computing resources together, not to secure the Bitcoin network, but attempting to crack one of Bitcoin's cryptographic algorithms for creating wallet addresses. It is doing this by attempting to find a private key collision against wallets with known Bitcoin funds in it. The project has been running for a couple of years now and is currently generating over 436 million keys per second, or 37.71 trillion keys per day. Since the launch, over 37,847 trillion total keys have been generated. So has anything been found? Actually, yes. In total, the project has cracked three addresses with minimal amounts of funds on them, as well as 27 other keys, which are for puzzle addresses that are suspected to have been generated as easy bait for crackers, basically like a treasure hunt. Cracking wallets is just one part of the LBC mission. The other is to find a genuine cryptographic collision, which would mean it's possible to generate inputs that when put through the Bitcoin address hashing algorithm, generate an identical pair of outputs. If this ever were to happen, Bitcoin would have to use a new cryptographic algorithm for addresses. And this could happen, people, as back in February of 2017, Google shocked the cryptographic world when they created a genuine collision in the SHA-1 algorithm, shattering its security and ending its usefulness for good. This brute force attempt as it stands doesn't necessarily pose a threat to Bitcoin, but as more computers dedicate resources to the project and cracking techniques improve, Bitcoin's encryption technology might need to evolve. When SHA-1 first came out, everyone believed it was uncrackable. The next thing I would like to bring up is a bit of a stretch, but if this is true, the ramification for Bitcoin security would be utterly shattered, worse than finding a collision with LBC. Last year in June, on Bitcoin block number 528,249, something strange happened. A block hash came up that had certain traits about it that made the probability of it showing up very unlikely. Here is the hash now, nothing super special upon first glance, but when you look closer, you see 218E00. And this threw the crypto world into a frenzy, as many people were calling it a vanity hash, deliberately created by a miner with the encoded message. This was supposedly significant because of the 21, standing for 21 million Bitcoin, the total supply and E8 standing for the E8 theory, or the theory of everything, and 00 standing for the two extra zeros Satoshi put in the Genesis block, which I will explain the importance of in a bit. First, the E8 theory. This attempts to explain all known fundamental interactions in physics, describing how the combined structure and dynamics of all gravitational and standard model particle fields are part of the E8 light algebra and structure, something we can't fully visualize, but in a 3D model, the structure would look something like this. The theory was published in 2007 by theoretical physicist Anthony Garrett Lisi, just one year before the release of the Bitcoin white paper. And it would explain many mysteries in the universe, like quantum mechanics. Now, the numbers were eventually crushed on the odds of getting that hash was 21E800. And with the difficulty of the block at the time, there would be a 0.46 chance that it would show up by random chance. Possible, but not very likely. Now, some people say the 21E800 was a message from Satoshi, still out there using advanced technology to communicate with the Bitcoin community. And like I said, this actually ties into the mystery of the Genesis block because of how the block was created. Here is the hash for the Genesis block. As we can see, it has 10 leading zeros. 
As we can see, the next block, 1, has only 8 leading zeros. This is important because the zeros relate to the difficulty in mining. The more means the more difficult it is. The target block at the time was much lower to mine, yet Satoshi mined with a higher difficulty, including two extra zeros. You would have to think he did this on purpose. According to the hashing stats of normal computers and CPUs used to mine during that time, a single CPU would have about a 17% chance of solving the block in six days. However, according to the script signature, it only took the miner who solved the Genesis block about 4.2 minutes to sign the block. Now, either Satoshi had a supercomputer back then, or he just got extremely, extremely lucky with a single CPU. But the chances of that are very, very slim, just like the 21E800 hash. Is this chance or something more? On the day of the 21E800 hash, I actually made a video about it, and there was a website that gained some popularity, 21E8.com. If you went to the website, it had an orange 3D image of the E8 structure, with a Bitcoin symbol smack dab in the middle of it. Kind of freaky. But now, if you go to the webpage, it just has a countdown timer, with 168 days left. What date is that? That is January 3rd, the same day Satoshi mined the Genesis block and the Bitcoin network came into existence. What is going to happen on that day? Will it be Satoshi's return? I don't know about that, but there is a possibility that this is also the work of someone we know of, and they say they are currently building a quantum computer based on Bitcoin. Their name is Andrew DeSantis, and they have been creating DOS, a project shrouded in mystery. DeSantis is a software engineer, former co-owner of the Bitcoin magazine and an active contributor to Bitcoin code. Now, the details of his project have never been fully revealed, but if we go to the website dos.org, the only thing that pops up is the orange E8 structure, like the one on 21e8.com, and some white blocks with certain ones blacked out. Could that countdown timer be the release date of DOS from DeSantis? And does he possibly already have quantum technology to produce the hash 21E800? Plausible, although many people criticize DeSantis as being a loony and even schizo, and the likelihood of him having the technology is pretty much zero. But like I said, we always have to keep questioning and understanding that there might be a possibility that Bitcoin could change in the blink of an eye. One thing for sure is I know I'll be keeping an eye out for January 3rd, 2020. Cheers, viewers. I'll see you next time.